Okay, listen, there is no such thing as the perfect riding position because the word position implies that we're static on our bike. But the demands of the trail are always changing. So if there is no riding position, what is there then? There are specific four principles that we need to adhere to. These are physical and biomechanical principles. And as soon as we adhere, <laughs> adhere to these core principles, we have control, stability, and balance. In this video, you're finding out what these principles are. Albert Einstein once said, the measure of intelligence is the ability to change. And the same basically applies to riding a mountain bike. If you stay static on your bike, your bike is going to ride you. And most probably it's gonna throw you off sooner or later and you're gonna have neck pain and a headache. Mountain biking is an organic pursuit where our playing field is in constant flux. So we are constantly making adjustments as we go to find a flow state. Here's me riding a steep uphill section. Here's me riding over an obstacle. And here's me riding a steep downhill section. And here, riding a big roll down. What do all these really different looking scenarios have in common? They have in common the core principles of riding a mountain bike. These core principles are based on physics, anatomy, and psychology, and they will make you the pilot of your bike. Here are the principles. Principle one, stay evenly weighted through your feet with little to no weight in your hands. This will bring your center of mass over your bottom bracket, and it'll ensure ideal pressure control and traction. Principle two, use your arms and legs as suspension, meaning you will sometimes be really low and sometimes you'll be upright, always alternating in a high-low position depending on the terrain. What's the goal? To keep your head and torso as stable as possible by separating the bike from the body. Principle number three is you wanna have your index finger on your brakes at all times, ready to modulate the brakes. This will avoid abrupt stability jeopardizing braking. Principle number four, look ahead. One to two seconds. Your primary sense is your vision. Most stimuli are detected by your brain through your eyes. That's why you wanna practice deliberate vision, as I call it, looking one to two seconds ahead to where you wanna go. Not what you want to avoid, but where you want to go. So obviously, if I'm riding at walking pace, yes, I will look about one, two, three meters ahead. But if I'm riding at full downhill speed, my one to two seconds will probably be 15 to 20 meters ahead. So to know how many feet that is, by the way, you just need to multiply this number by three. In short, the four co core principles are, number one, balance stance through the feet. Number two, using our dynamic range of motion in arms and legs. Number three, modulated feathering the brakes with our index finger. And number four is deliberate vision. Now let's look at two of the riding situations you've already seen and look at and for these core principles. In this technical uphill section, you can see me stand up to apply the four principles. I stay heavy on my feet and use my core muscles to keep my body balanced in the bike while pedaling. My center of mass is over my bottom bracket for ideal traction. You can also see me use deliberate vision, using my arms as suspension to keep my body stable, and I'm covering the brakes with my index fingers. In this bumpy downhill section, you'll see me apply the same principles. I'm staying balanced through my feet, letting the bike move by using my arms and legs as natural suspension, using modulated braking and deliberate vision. Can you see that although the position looks totally different, I am always applying the four principles and this is what gives me control, stability and balance. And that is how I can tackle technical uphill and downhill sections. 
Of course, when you're learning skills, you will learn a neutral and a ready position or a trail position or a tag position or whatever you want to call it. But I want you to understand, and that's the point of this video, that all of these positions are just snapshots. You will be in a constant flux, in a flow. Your body and your bike will move, but these essential elements, the four elements I just taught you, they will always remain the same. And that's why a single picture doesn't say a lot about the writing ability of this specific rider. You'll need a video. And if you see a video and the head and the torso are relatively stable and still, but the bike is moving, especially through really chunky terrain, but everything looks easy and flowy. That's when you know that this rider has mastered these essential and core principles of riding a mountain bike. Enjoy practicing. Leave me a comment below how you like this video. Give me the thumb up, subscribe, share it with friends. See you again for my next video. Goodbye.